Good evening, everyone. I uh, will we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, first order of business is to approve the minutes for the August 21st. Any motion to do so? So moved. Second. Any changes? Discussion for the minutes? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor? Unanimous. <laughs> Next up is citizen comments. Hello, everyone. Uh, are there any of this time? Yeah, you know, we'll move along. And as always, we are pretty open to engaging in our other <laughs> agenda items. So feel free to ask questions and stuff like that. We're common sense as we can. Uh, presentation school FYI items. We're in the business. Um, Preschool. Next steps. Hello, everybody. I've got a short PowerPoint. And I started, um, as you, those of you who've been coming on a regular basis know that we've been discussing the idea of preschool, at public preschool, for a little bit now. And so um, I prepared the slideshow, review the history, and take a look at some of the budget options. Um, unfortunately, the church still has not had their meeting, so they have not voted definitely one way or another. However, they have given me the numbers and the budget information, so that's still pending their final vote. So when we get to the numbers, I'll, I'll tell you more about that. So uh, the church will be uh, voting as a congregation on that um, this uh, a week from yesterday, so the Sunday the 24th. Um, so it will be an answer. So our, the goal was for us, for me to prepare a public preschool proposal for just for Jackson to be evaluated in the fall. <coughs> just a really brief synopsis. In 2015-16, Mr. Bosi and I presented a proposal to both the joint board of the Jackson and the Bartlett communities. Um, there was discussion and some study. However, the Bartlett School Board voted first to not pursue it, so at that point it became a moot point for Jackson to. However, the Jackson School Board and the community were still interested in pursuing it, so they requested that we set up a committee, which Jessica was the chairperson for, and we have citizens and faculty members and parents who met and studied all kinds of different options here in town, different locations, um, and came up with a proposal for the preschool program. Um, the church had just taken on a new pastor. It became uh, the church hall, became the preferred venue for the location of the preschool. We looked at the Whitney Center, we looked at this building, we looked at the little red library across the street and for a number of reasons selected the church as what we would pursue. So we went ahead and pursued that. Um, so because the church wasn't available last spring, um, the committee made their recommendations and then the board requested that I continue to negotiate with the ch church and look at different options, continue to look at that as the option. So these are some of the reasons that we looked at for why we wanted the public preschool to be here in Jackson as opposed to any other location. We also did look at vouchers. I didn't add that in. Um, Jessica spent some time looking at some of the legal options for voucher and sending kids to other private preschools. But um, if we have a public preschool here in our public school systems, all children are able to attend. It's more equitable for everyone. It allows us to oversee what the curriculum, what the methods are, evaluate the staff, so we have a good handle on the quality of the experience the kids are getting. 
um, so be no additional travel costs. Right now, for our students who we pay tuition for, we have to pay mileage, we have to pay the speech and the OTS subcontractors, which we would continue to do, but um, there's a lot of traveling costs added on to that. We have our school nurse and principal and um, teachers and unified arts people here on the property, so it would be easier to provide the kiddos with those options as well. Um, the family gets to know us before their kids arrive at kindergarten. Um, and we used to, years ago with the locution, have the preschool kiddos were buddies with our K-1 classroom. So that was a really neat program. Um, if, if you had older children here in this community, I know one of the issues some of our parents have is getting their kids picked up and getting back here for the end of the school day. They will ease the transition into kindergarten and then I'll allow us to share in the, in the school resources. And hopefully it will attract more young families such as yourselves to our community. So we've held some forums and uh, I know the board members have been um, talking with people in the community. I have been as well. And we know that historically Jackson taxpayers have been really good to us as a school. They support us here. Um, early childhood matters and most parents today want some kind of preschool experience for their youngsters before kindergarten. More parents than ever are working, and that's true of, of the Jackson community as well. And we have a number of great preschools in the Valley. However, they're a distance from here, or they're not affordable for every family. We also know that the Jackson taxpayers are concerned about their tax dollars, and they'd like some choice in, in what, where they send their children. And finally, um, we heard loud and clear that um, Jackson families would prefer their children to be here in this community as opposed to in Marlin or Conway or other locations in the Valley. Currently, um, this is the data for the last few years on our special ed spending. For those of you who don't know, when a child is uh, found to be in need of services at three years old, we as a school district are required to provide services to those children. So. We pay tuition, we might pay for speech, language, OT, physical therapy, uh, all of those extra services. So um, looking at this current year, we have eight four-year-olds and five three-year-olds. It's one of those bubbles. We're a community where we have bubbles of large population and then bubbles of smaller population. So next year's kindergarten has eight projected students in it and we're spending approximately $10,000 at this moment, plus we have another student that's in the process of being evaluated. So whether or not we pay for a public preschool, we are paying for preschool <coughs> education in some way, shape, or form, um, but not for every child, just for those who are identified. <coughs> we ask questions during this? Or sure. You want to? That part just about tuition is that ten thousand. Would that mean that if there was a program in place here, that the person there would be staff on site to handle all of those special needs? Um, that number is tuition only. So, oh, so, so that would oh, okay. be the tuition. We still subcontract because we're so small okay. for speech and OT and the other services. So that wouldn't necessarily be a savings for our district. However, the tuition would be because that okay. child would be here in, in Jackson. Mm -hmm. That tuition is not evenly divided between children, right? No, it depends on the need that they're assessed. And um, in order to deliver the academic services or the speech and language services, the team decides how many hours a week that child will get in their high So one child might only get, you know, two days a week, another child might get five, depending on the need of the child. <coughs> Any other questions? So this um, preschool proposal is the same as the one that we brought forward last year. The schedule would be from 9 to 1 on Monday through Friday, and we would offer before and after care. However, that would be paid for by the parents and not by the district. Um, we would follow the SAU 9 calendar, whatever that may end up to be. <laughs> um, and the location, the Church Fellowship Hall was the original location. 
However, I was recently asked by the board after the last meeting to take another look at an, uh, another option or perhaps how we would house them here if need be. So I've done that. It would be free for Jackson residents and um, we talked about allowing non-resident students. However, the board would be tasked with setting a tuition rate for those students. We would have a 50% teacher, a full-time assistant, and a part-time assistant. Um, transportation would be provided by the parents and next year's um, I know Nora Dufalo has kind of taken over the census for the school district she's just gotten started um, but we're expecting seven three and four year olds if we were to go ahead with preschool for next year and our proposal did encompass both three-year-olds and four year olds So uh, last year we um, made a guess about how many students would attend the before and after care. I chose not to do that at this time just because there's no way of really knowing and that's going to be at the cost of the families, not necessarily included in the town tax budget. Um, and the same with the out of town tuition. We have guessed probably three kiddos might, might opt in, but we have no way of predicting that. So we're going to deal with that. We had talked a little bit too about how we could supplement or offset some of the startup costs. And we have a school grant known as the Rural Education Program, REAP. And typically, I could afford to spend approximately $6,000 to go towards startup costs, although they're still added into the taxable amount that you'll see a little bit later. And then we have other options that we can seek. However, I think to get it approved, it makes sense for me to give you the whole budget and not count on extra grants and use that just to offset the, the budget if we decided to pull with that. So basically, here are the numbers. Um, the first 2017-18 was the budget that was developed for the church site for this year. Um, the 2018 amount because in negotiations with the church, we found that we'd be breaking it up and down more often than we originally thought. John felt that it was important to increase our custodial, basically more custodial costs incurred with that. So um, the staffing would be $97,009. The rent cost that I've gotten from the church is $9,000 for the year and we're share the plowing with them, so it would be $16.50. The supplies stay the same, um, the curriculum would stay the same. The insurance is, is yet to be determined. Um, the church has asked to be a rider on our insurance, so we have to still price that. But startup costs and so forth. So the total cost for the church option for next year would be $126,207,000. <coughs> If we were to do it at the school, it would be exactly the same staffing. However, we wouldn't need the custodian because he's cleaning here already. There's no more <coughs> space to be cleaning. There would be no rent incurred. The other um, supplies and costs would be almost the same. The difference would be in the startup costs. The benefit of the church is they have a playground and a fence. We don't have a fenced playground. Our equipment is for older students, so we would need to look at not only the furniture, preschool size furniture, but also outdoor equipment, playground equipment, and so forth, and fencing. And that's at a minimum, because I haven't had um, sufficient time to look at the space needs that we might have, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. Any questions on, on those numbers right now? The number for insurance for this year, is that confirmed that it would be up at all, or are you just assuming that it would be? I spoke to an agent from our, our provider. He said um, that it would go up for us, and, and in order for him to price the church option, he needs to see a copy of the contract, mm -hmm. because there's some specific language that he would want us to have or not have. Um, and so until he had all of those, that information, that he couldn't give us any kind of quote for that. So Gail, yeah, what's the, so from the 2017-2018 proposed year at the church, the $345 for insurance, what was that based on? It was a different provider, and that's for liability insurance only. It was based on the number of staff that were working. Yes. 
So there's the ta tax implications of the two options. Um, 32 cents per thousand for the church option and 29 cents per thousand. Um, and that's based on the 2016 values for Jackson. Yeah, this might be your next slide, but I, I seem to recall that last year when we had the, form, the kind of the public forum, that that got broken down to something like seventy-two dollars per car. How was the average? Or I think we guessing. averaged on a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar house. Okay. Um, so if you wanted to do that, yeah. Not, okay. Well, yeah, that's just helpful to kind of put it in context because <laughs> yeah. I think that's hard to break into. Like seventy-two dollars. Wasn't it seventy-two dollars? Yeah. yeah. Something like this. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, more in the houses. Yes. More exactly. <laughs> These are the comparables um, for the current year's tuition rates per student. Well, you know what? I didn't do the per student cost for our. <coughs> and then there's some pros and cons to both building. Here in Jackson, the staff is here. It's easy for families to drop off and pick off. There aren't any costs for set setting up and breaking down the classroom. We would need to do that. And it is a transition to kindergarten. However, it is going to impact the current programs, the configurations, and the other space needs. Um, it seems like we have a small number of kiddos, but with special services and the number of uh, different things that we're doing, and having a library and a music program and an art room and those kinds of things, some of those programs will be impacted in some way if we house them here. We've not fully explored all of those different options for space at this point because it was a short window of time. Um, and if that's something we want to pursue more, then the faculty and I will have to do a little bit more work on that. But the church building, it gets the um, school and children in the community of the church. There's a full kitchen there. Um, what the cons is you need to set up to break down and they would ask us to vacate if there was a funeral or a wedding um, or some other thing for that room. Um, we also have the rent, the plowing, and some additional costs with that option. Yeah, do we not have access to a full kitchen here on campus? We have the Whitney Center. Oh, okay. it's not in this building, but we okay. do have a full commercial kitchen okay. next to us. And the utilities, I mean, that's built into the rent. I mean, the power is extra, but there, 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 there would be another utilities added on. No, okay. only on telephone, only internet would be on us. Yeah. Yeah, can I ask one more question? Sure. Um, just could you help maybe quantify that, that capacity question about the space here? Like, was this school built for a certain number of students compared to what it has now? Because I think that question of how much does it impact the students who are currently here, if it's housed here, is an important one. And if the difference is we built a school for 120 people and we have 100, that's very different than we have 50 and we built a school for 300. Right. So we can, you know, within each classroom, we have four classrooms right now, a K1, a 2, 3, a 4, 5, and a 6. Um, so we only have four classroom spaces. We've got a library, we've got the Whitney Center. And the basement is there. It's not, you know, a desirable location. The upstairs has not, I don't want to say condemned, but it can't be used for children and education as it's not fire safe. Mm -hmm. um, so without- It's actually to use at all. Right. No, it's not available safe for anybody. No. 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 So, and uh, a lot of our spaces are not set up for increased size uh, either. So somehow, either we have to have more different combinations of grades, we have to move the library, we have to move our art or music programs out of the art room. I mean, somebody, that those are the impacts, depending on which option mm -hmm. you would look at as the most feasible. And that's what I haven't really had an opportunity to do. Um, but I wanted you to know that it would have some The number of students that we have were right capped out at 75, basically, is what the building is here. Old, but that's 75 K through six right. students. When you consider preschool, it's not like we have 65 kids. We can't take more than 10 preschoolers. It's preschool is different because again, we don't have any space for preschoolers currently. And it's something we need to buy furniture for. We need to set up a fence and playground for. Um, those are bigger factors than necessarily how many students can this building 
handle. Um, it's, it's a matter of what space gets used for preschools is how that impacts us. It's not total number of students, it's what space do they use and how is, will that impact the K through six programs. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I think from my old school board days, my memory is the smaller the kid, the more space they need. The like DOE requirements are for small for preschools are so much per square foot versus older students. So I brought a hammer related to that. Is that right? It really depends on the size of the building. Exactly. HHS is as long as you're as long as you're not looking at. Um, going as a child care, getting licensed as a child care through DHHS, DOE does not talk about that. Space. Maybe it was the kindergarten, I remember that certain space requirements for because that was an issue at one point of configuration. I believe it's more about the number of children with adults. Exactly. That's what I would say. Exactly. Yeah. So if we have a very no, big staff. We talk about spacing guidelines for kindergarten kids. Some, mm -hmm. yeah, somewhere there is. I wish it was to use it. She brings that up sometimes. Mm -hmm. There are regs somewhere on there. But I, I believe when the committee, the preschool committee, looked into the building, the library room was considered large enough to hold some number of students. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that number of students is. It, it, it was maybe 12 we had to cap it at, um, 15 or something like that. So, and was, when, you know, when we originally looked at it, we just, oh, yes, um, kind of when around, we yeah. originally looked at it, we have looked at um, as many spaces as we could. So, and it's actually nice to see we have some committee members here. So if you guys have a better recollection, please speak up. But um, we had run the num we tried to run the numbers on what would it look like in the Whitney Center? What would it look like in the library? How could we move things around? And uh, it was viable, I think, up to about 15 people. Right. So what these guys are saying is true. The DHS, uh, and maybe it's changed in the past year, but when we looked at it, the regs did not apply to uh, something happening on school campus. It, it really is more of a... Um, provider to child ratio that we would be looking at. So to get to your question, which I think is a good one, it, the when we looked at on campus, it, we have to look at how it would impact the other grades, obviously, but our conclusion at the time was that there would be enough for him to do it. I, I was more concerned than square footage about having an easel and sand table and a block area and a, and a reading corner and, you know, looking at all of those things and then having a bathroom. I mean, you need a bathroom with a small enough toilet and a low enough sink mm -hmm. and you can't really have a room without a bathroom and a sink, in my opinion, just because what you're doing is messy painting and, you know, those kinds of things. So. Just in terms of the bathroom, you know, we did not have child-sized bathroom in the church. Right. Um, so there were bench benches, like steps. Yeah, steps they, were they were big jumping. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, we did have a little steps. <laughs> 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 um, a couple of questions I have for us to totally think about anyway. Kevin um, and Andrew, but you're here actually. Conway's targeting to get preschool going for the next year, correct? They are looking at proposals, correct. So they're, they're moving towards that. And I did hear Bartlett's actually considering that for next year as well at this point. They're going through with the proposal again. Yeah. Um, so both Conley and Bartlett at this point are moving to try to get preschool up and running for the 18-19 um, school year. Um, and I think it's time for this one. Maybe we're not ready today because we haven't determined space. But space aside, that's why to me it was nice to look at can we do it in this building? And, and yes, we can. It's not ideal, but we can do it. Um, I think that you know we're, we're looking for reactions from the community and, and how to move this forward. And I think until the school board commits one way or the other to doing preschool, it's going to be hard to gauge the reaction from the community because the community is waiting for us to make a decision to, to do something. Um, and I kind of like to see us make a decision regardless of locations. Regardless of locations, they are are we going to commit to doing preschool <coughs> or are we not? Um, and once we make that decision, then we can really gauge how the community is going to react. That like, oh, you're crazy, or yes, we really want you to do that. But until we make the decision to commit to it, it's kind of we're going to be kind of not getting a good response from the community. Um, and if we're really not ready to make a decision because we're we're hung up on space, that's fine. But 
if the space is, if the church works out, you know, we can consider using the church. If it doesn't, we can at least do it here. I think we're ready either to make the commitment one way or the other to the preschool. And it's it's obviously not binding. It doesn't really mean anything until we actually vote to put something on the warrant. And we're not doing that tonight. But we'd be make, we could make a definitive statement one way or the other. Are we going to try to get preschool up and running for the 18 and 19 school year? Regardless of whether it's at the church or in this building. Um, and I guess I'd like to entertain a motion to for non binding vote. I'll make a motion. Yeah. I'll um, second it. For, for putting, so that way Gail knows, yeah, okay, we're, we're planning on it. We're going to do it. We'll get it in our budget. Between now and the budget, we'll have the answer on the church. We can make a decision as a board as to whether we want to use the church if, if it is available or to, to, to have it here. Um, but so I guess the motion would be to have it, it's a, it's a non binding vote to. Um, have preschool up and running for the 18, 19 school year. Um, mm -hmm. Under the, I think the hours, I think we're, we're good with. Okay. Jerry, would it, would it make sense to say develop a warrant article for preschool? Yeah, yeah. I like that. So mm -hmm. then right. that makes it more real too. If too. the board recommends developing a warrant mm -hmm. article for preschool, right. then mm -hmm. you're going to have to take a vote at some point on a potential on the the actual right. okay. mm -hmm. at the proper time but budgetarily and programmatically everything will will take place at that time. so yeah so the emotion is to develop a, a warrant article to have preschool for the 18 19 school year based on the, what you see in here based on the proposal yeah. that we see in here so make me sound really good when you put that motion in made a motion to develop a warrant article for preschool for the 2018 19 school year and I'll discuss that, I guess, yeah. from here, if we want to. And it does. Ms. Moss? So then at that point, the townspeople would go in March. Is that, is that what I'm saying? Yeah. So this would we, we, so we still need to develop the warrant article and to make it official from the board standpoint as far as what we're actually putting something on the warrant, that's when it becomes real. So, I mean, that's the binding vote. Um, then the town votes on that warrant article. It's always up to the legislative body. Um, but what we're saying tonight is if we vote in favor of this, is that <coughs> we're, we are going to put preschool before the town mm -hmm. um, for a vote. Mm -hmm. In the warrant article, we won't know the number of the warrant article until we know the location among right. some other. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not making the school board commit to a location yet, right. but we'd be committing to actually pursuing preschool. And in the end, and basically it's just fortifying that this is going to be a plan that will be developed and, and voted on again for this budget cycle so that then it will be turned over to the voters Thank you. i think what might happen what, what might help for all of us who aren't as plugged in as you guys are to all the steps is just like so then what happens like first because there's been talk about a public meeting which i don't That's know if that goes away you know and then at this point it gets voted in the budget and then there's a warrant article which is voted on by march and then if everything goes well there's preschool that shows up in september but that's i think i'm i'm that'd be helpful for me to understand that's the exact process you didn't miss okay, it yeah. <laughs> 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 it, it, it yeah. won't go in the budget uh -huh. it'll, it'll be a article. separate article in the warrant it'll still be in the budget but it's out Right. right, it's okay. not in your budget number. It's a separate article mm -hmm. okay. that you vote on separately. And that warrant article vote um, happens in March, and that's in, like, the is school that? School. Oh, that's the school, 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 school meeting. The school district meeting. meeting. So who votes? Everybody in town. Everybody in town. Who shows up? Everybody in town. Right. It's usually standard or Well, we have had some. We have this one. This might be one. It will be one. It would be nice, though, for people to show up to one to two of those meetings before the March meeting. So So you're not all coming, because we will get some people who come and, what I say, peacocking at that meeting um, just to show off or whatever and they could have come beforehand with their concerns and stuff so it's a good gauge to come a meeting or two before and see where we are in the process mm -hmm. and, and make sure we're and all because I've been school board meetings before yes okay school board meetings. it's just nice to kind of know when we're um, you know talking to other people and we just like company yeah but we like it <laughs> 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 I, I thank you so much for this the numbers are really important because whether it's at the at the church or it's here, 
it's not a, it's, it's not so much a dollars and cents issue now. It's a com it's a concept issue. Three cents difference per thousand is not the it's not going to be a huge driver. It's the concept. I would also add that in addition to the school district meeting, coming to the budget hearings is really important. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's where the sausage is made, um, but it doesn't get nearly as much uh, glamour and, or maybe dessert, I guess, in this case, <laughs> as, as the actual district meeting is. But that's where you hear a lot of the good questions and concerns from people. So there's two of those in advance of that as well. Um, uh, the, the church meeting, I, I hope I, and I think will go very well. It's a simple majority vote on Sunday. Um, if anybody wants to join the church ahead and get the vote, <laughs> which is more than ahead of time. Um, but, um, we're we're going to meet, the council's going to meet on Wednesday nights to talk about some of the nuts and bolts so they can present adequately for Sunday. But I personally don't anticipate there being any problem. There is a proxy um, vote available at the church. We've made proxy voting available. So that always throws a little bit of a what if involved. But I think, it'll, I think it will go well. Um. Quick thing because I was just doing the math in my head, but I just tried to go my head there. If you're saying the operating costs are like 120, whatever it was, we're saying we have 12 students, so we're talking like $11,000 per student. Okay. And so then I saw the tuitions, and I know because I pay tuition for my child, but we're saying it's like $5,000 to go to two existing Montessori schools. I guess, I don't know. I mean, I think I'm in favor of free school or being here or everything, but I guess I'm just wondering from a, uh, you know, from a taxpayer standpoint, where. Why not just give everyone a five thousand dollars stipend then to let their children go? And you know, am I missing something? I guess. Well, and I don't think we can legally do that. Well, can't, we can't, we can't do right that. now, we can't okay. legally do that, but it's, it's also well, we really can't. Well, we would have voted for that already, probably. I know. Sometimes I don't know. 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 I one, what we ended up coming with, up with as a committee was that we felt that the value that would be given to both the community as well as the children in our town and the families, on balance, it was worth that money. Also, because we couldn't predict how many kids were going to come. So if it's, you know, and we, we did run through the hypothetical. What if one kid shows up? $120,000, is that worth? So, you know, one of the things that we ha have to look at and think about is, you know, is there a threshold under which we would not, pr you know, maybe we say something to Gail about configuration and say, if you have only one student, is it in their best interest to have one kid in preschool by themselves? So that might be a configuration issue. I don't know if the board necessarily needs to address that at this time, but um, it, it's definitely something that we looked at. Um, as far as vouchers go, there is a bill that was passed by, it, it was, it's called the Croydon Bill. That just got passed, and um, we are not mandated to provide preschool. But in towns that are provide, mandated to provide education, K through 12, if you do not offer that school in your town, it is, it is now legal, and it was legal, but it's in writing, that you can provide um, alternatives. So that is something that was on our table at the time, the committee that worked on it. That was something, despite how perhaps individuals felt, um, it, for the whole package, when you look at everything, because it's very easy to break this down into little pieces, right? And to say, oh, well, this doesn't work because of this, or that doesn't work because of that. When we looked at, the, we stepped back and looked at the whole mosaic, what we thought was, this is the right thing to do, not only because of the value that we place on education and intervention, but there is a value to a community at saying, we value education for our earliest residents. We want to attract people who think that's important. And so we're just going to do this. And you know, um, but it's something to that we have to keep in mind as we move forward. Right, because you're saying that's a cost per person, but from mm -hmm. a standpoint of like, oh, then you're allowing children from out of town to pay these through, I think $6,000 was thrown on there. That's so much lower from some the right. taxpayer said when I'm saying like, okay, so you're saying kids yeah. here pay that much, but you're giving a lower price for No, and in that presentation that's given stuff. on it, I'm, I'm very aware of the fact that when you say there's no cost to for this preschool, there is a cost. Taxpayers are paying it. So I don't think any of us are not aware of that. It just, um, on balance, at least for me, the, that cost is worth it. Right. So. Selling that thought. Yeah. Um, can I just add that idea of that cost? Um, I mean, all of these efforts, and this is getting into a much bigger discussion, but the value of our early childhood educators and being paid a sustainable living wage mm -hmm. and having the education background to provide that level. Um, that's been a huge issue for early childcare providers and having folks who will stay, stay in that profession. <laughs> It's a really exciting opportunity for Jackson to sort of lead the way in the 
much larger conversation. Okay. And to extend on that, Carrie, as well, it's, it's not just the, the money up front. Some of that upfront money is designed to avoid further costs down the road in the K through 12 yeah. classroom environment. And um, you know that might not be as big a factor for Jackson as it is for Conway or Bartlett even. Um, because something I've been saying for a couple of years now is it's kind of silly that Conway hasn't done it already because Conway's going to save money in the long run. Um, will we save what we invest up front? Probably not. It wouldn't be genuine to say that we're, you know, we're going to recoup that money in the long haul because we probably won't, but we will recoup some of it. By having the kids earlier, we will avoid later on costs. Um, and that's always something that to consider anyway for it. So yes, yeah, it's, it's a lot of money up front, but um, it's an investment in the future of our community to, to bring younger families into our community. Um, if we don't have preschool and Bartlett does and Conway does, it's going to be much more attractive for younger families to go there as opposed to here. Um, it's part of that overall investment in our future. Not just the, the year to year cost for individual kids. Um, Jess, is, is, the, is there still discussion about moving this, possibly moving the sixth graders, our middle schoolers, over to Bartlett um, so that they are then part of the middle school when they go into sixth grade? Or is that, is, is that conversation ended? Has it been broached? I, well, I, for, as a single board member, I can tell you that conversation has ended. I know um, there it is a topic that is on it's our minds. Yeah, so I think it is something where we're still looking at um, information is actually still coming in because nothing is fully defined as far as even what tuitions would look like and things like that. We haven't had any formal committees prepared to address it, um, but. In preparation for tonight's meeting, that was a conversation I personally had with many people, including some of the members of the board up here on an individual basis, which was, what do we do if we now we're bringing in new students? Uh, and to go back to what you said, Sasha, which was a good point, is, you know, how does the capacity work? Is it in the best interest of education, even if you can fit people? So, uh, you know, the committee that we were on last year, and Penny, again, thank you for your service, you know, we looked at that to say, what happens if you, if we, that, if, you know, we've been offered this opportunity to send kids to Bartlett, do we want to keep those sixth graders in? Is it in their best interest? Is it in their best interest to send them? Um, are there ways to, to respond to that? And I think us making the decision to move forward tonight is going to force that conversation. So it is not over, in short. <laughs> there, there's nothing in process, but we need to figure out how to get our process going yeah, forward. It would be nice to start having that conversation with Bartlett and get some pricing. Because in the last year when we were on the committee, it was, you know, we, everybody was just assuming it was going to be the same cost as what is it as what we pay to send them to middle school at now, um, and the school board in Bartlett denied that. They said they don't know what it would cost, so no one's broached that subject yet. It sounds like in terms of getting a quote from them and, and really starting a serious discussion on the cost of sending our sixth graders over there and allowing them to step up into middle school at the same time the Bartlett middle schoolers are stepping, the Bartlett sixth graders are stepping into middle school. We actually have a meeting with them next month, so I'm sure that's going to come up. And the, and the church space would be a one-year renewable lease, so that also puts some future flexibility to, to space. Like, we wouldn't be locked into a long-term Mm -hmm. Contract. So Bartlett is actually in the process. Um, Scott isn't here tonight. He usually is here. He said Bartlett is in the process of getting some numbers from the SAU so that they could offer us a price soon. And their board is working towards, as well as our board is working towards finding some financial information out. Right. Okay. <coughs> And I, I hope that we can also <coughs> talk about developmental stages and what's best for the students right. more so than, than the cost of it. Mm -hmm. That's what's important to me, is are they going to get well, yeah, yeah. sufficient the, educational benefits to make that worthwhile. The right. why that's even more important, Gail, is because the one thing we know is that our costs are going to up if right. we send our kids right. to borrow. It's not, it doesn't even save us money. That's going to cost us a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, so it then this that forces a conversation to be entirely about what's in the best interest academically and um, 
developmentally for the kids is, is that because if you're going to spend a lot more money to do that it better be for a really good reason <laughs> with the size of next year's class if for some reason we did it next year you're talking almost a two hundred thousand dollar increase in the budget to send them to borrow at, at, at the current at the current rate, rate. Current. not trying to belittle or cut off the conversation but i think we should move the vote oh um, yeah so, so what i want to talk about the motion there's yeah. steps on preschool that we need to figure out the, the um we haven't really decided the tuition piece if we're going to do that I'm pretty sure, obviously, if it's in this building, we probably wouldn't be <coughs> doing tuition. Um, we wouldn't be looking at that, I'm assuming. Um, but, so we'll need to figure out tuition. What's that going to look like? How much is it going to be? Um, the, um, and then it would just be if we're going to consider the church. So I think what we'll do as a board is, if we're going to vote for this tonight, and um, the next step will be decide where. And right. we'll have to wait for the church's decision on this for us to be able to make a decision on that. Once we hear from the church, then we'll get together and decide. Um, probably, um, maybe a couple of us will get together to do that once the church makes a decision. Get a couple of us get together to make a recommendation to the full board at our next meeting to just make a decision on, on where we're going to do it. Um, plus, before you uh, move to vote, would is there a is our, has there been a conversation about um, tuition as an option for incoming if we were to go with the preschool in this building? Or uh, so when we had initially presented it, we, you know, it, it's like crystal ball work, right? Because we don't know who would show up, if anyone. So we had thrown in a rough estimate, I think it was about 6000 because looking at comparable costs, we had run a comparative analysis. So Gail, if I'm recalling correctly, we didn't, she didn't put that in, but that's something that we would need to consider because we do that for other students. So uh, I think it would come down to space and what it would cost. So if we have a committee looking at it, if we get the information from you, we can come back. And and realistically, if Bartlett and Conway are going to go do this, yeah. we're probably going to have very little people yeah. wanting to get tuition in any way. I would no, I mean, I don't mean tuitioning them in, I mean Jackson yeah. students, Jackson preschoolers. Tuitioning them somewhere else? No, tuitioning, if, they they came, if, for if there was a preschool in Jackson, would they be coming at a tuition? No, it would be a public, free public, public, public education. Taxpayer funded. For students who are Jackson residents. Jackson right. residents. Right. Yes, it, it's outside of this year. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. And, and just a point of clarification on the school choice thing. That was a that was based on a long-standing litigation. The very small school district, not dissimilar from Jackson, where they were sending the kids to a Montessori school because. But the key, because they didn't offer it past the fourth grade education. The key provision is if you're not offering the school, if you're not offering the education in your district. Right. right. This is something that we're going to be offering that nobody else is. So it's actually kind of like school choice in reverse. Right. Um, so I don't, I don't think it would apply for for us. I hope it won't. Um, so, um, but it is, it is signed. It's new legislation. It's passed. It will be, I'm sure, it'll be starting to rear its head pretty soon for some districts. Be interesting. I don't want to delay your vote any longer, but just a quick question on this really great PowerPoint. Is it possible to get a copy of this digitally? Because I think it really okay. succinctly yeah, answers sure. yeah. a lot um, of questions that yeah. the community you want to do with else. You know what? Yeah. 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 We'll, 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 we'll a couple numbers we need to Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Jeff, a point person for someone that we could email if we wanted a digital copy? That would be fine. This was okay. actually Gail's address. So, yeah, so yes. credit to you, Gail, for... Uh, yeah, that was great. It was really helpful. Yes. Can you put it on the town, town site and school? I mean, That'd be awesome. Yeah. Really accessible? Yes. I can put it on the, how about if I put it on the Jackson School yeah. website? Yeah. School yeah. website. Yeah. That's good. Okay. And just one last piece on timing. So, I, because I know this is a concern. Yeah. So, we have still a couple more months to get it into the budget and on a Warren article. So, if we come back in October, we'll have a lot more information. And we probably and do we have the appropriate program. amount of time to then have the public meeting in a way that works? Like, does that mean public meeting would happen November 1 or something like this? I mean, assuming well, it depends. Happen. I mean, before we were talking about having a public hearing in general, and it's to me, it was like, why have that before we make a decision to actually yeah, do it? Exactly. What's the, what are people really going to come tell us? Mm -hmm. um, and um, that's was separate than a public hearing for a warrant article in the got budget. It. That we have to have by law, uh -huh. and that'll be in January. Oh, got it. Okay. After Thank we you, decide, in December, we'll decide, we'll finalize the budget, and the, the board will vote on a budget and all the warrants in the budget, on, on the warrant, all the articles in on the warrant. We'll vote for in December, 
in January, we'll have a public hearing on all of those. Great. Thanks for coming. If you're looking for public opportunities, no, there <laughs> happens to be, <laughs> for those of you who like to get out at night, <laughs> um, there is a discussion with author Suzanne Buffard at White Birch Books on Thursday night this week, um, looking at why do we care about preschool, what makes looking at quality, other models, the most important year, according to Adam S. So there's opportunities to send anyone you think might want it earlier. Uh, All right, let's uh, are we gonna attend to talk after the vote or not? Sure. Well, I got one thing I want to say about it, so I should say it after. So, just for some clarification, I'll be voting no on this proposal, uh, only because it's a blanket proposal on either here or the church. Uh, I'm all for public preschool, but I believe if we're going to do it, we should do it right. <coughs> I don't believe doing it off-site is the right way to do it. So, this particular proposal, I'm going to vote no. Should it come back to around to in this building, I would probably vote yes again. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you clarified that, Keith, because I wasn't quite sure because I knew that you are opposed to it in the church and that you would do it here. And that's why this is a little bit awkward because you're not really forcing you into either. Can't vote for but, it because you're right. saying both. Right. That makes sense. Um, so, and we're assuming that the church, as much as Peter's confident, confident or confident? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can answer that. But there certainly is not a. Right. It's not a done deal with the church. There's certainly dialogue in the church. So. Not. And you said it's a one year to one year. It would be a one year renewal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that could change. Yes. It gives flexibility to both. <coughs> well, let's let's vote on this anyway, and we'll okay. go from here. Um, all those in favor? That's four. Opposed? One. Okay. Um. Anything else on preschool? No. Does anyone that was here? It won't be a disturbance if you decide. That's right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Thank you. Tell your friends for the next All your work. And thanks for the presentation. Thanks for the presentation. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to get an update? Or yeah, so uh, what? Yeah, update on Wait. Oh, yeah, we're yeah. 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 No, we don't. Okay. So, um, we have preliminary pictures um, from the um, architect and um, engineer at HEB. Um, Jerry, did you get an email from John? Um, uh, yeah. Yes. At eight from ATB. <laughs> so no, just last week there was an email. Uh, no, I didn't check my junk mail later though, so I'm like. Yeah, so we should. Um, there was a bill or an invoice or something that had to do with money. Bottom line zero. Um, they the ATB did it all for free. So he, um, we we just so first step obviously, as any time now we need to secure drawings from him. He needs. Um, some kind of agreement on the money 
um, part, which is coming from you. Then we give Kevin, um, uh, you the other Kevin, our um, building permit. Hopefully it gets approved relatively quickly. <coughs> Kevin Bennett. Um, approved relatively quickly. Um, and um, Gail has, the, oh, she put it up there. Good. Um, so we kind of worked through this outline for the year. Um, his permit was contingent on the stamp. Yeah, so if anybody remembers that. Right. There they are. So. Yeah, so um, <coughs> once we get those officially. Um, we need to, um, there's just some things that have to happen relatively quickly is get the um, concrete companies um, for pricing and, and that kind of stuff. We're hoping the sixth graders can be involved in writing that. We need to contact Hancock Lumber. Um, your name is on that list of um, for um, building materials. Hoping the kids are going to be involved in writing and contacting and talking to all of these community people. And then, depending on the permit, um, weather everything is weather dependent. You know, from here on, uh, whether we um, prep the site and um, excavate and pour the concrete before or after the snow flies. Um, Stokey was going to. Um, his list of to-dos is talking to the town crew about helping us with the digging and that kind of stuff. So he's going to deal with that. And then um, the, in, as we move to the spring, um, John volunteers, Joe Malford will plane um, the um, beams um, and do demonstrations and then provide learning opportunities for the kids and after school at, um, after school learning yeah. opportunities for kids and, and that kind of stuff. Um, and then John and his cousin will cut the joinery, make the pieces all so they fit together. Um, and again, so the kids will have opportunities for learning the methods and the tools and, and all that stuff. And then, okay, if you scroll down, by June, um, a raising, um, beginning of June, old fashioned barn raising. Um, and doing the roofing. Um, so that's kind of our year outline. And then we, we went through and just listed the classroom connections. There's a, we could do a bigger, um, and I have kind of a bigger kind of formal project-based learning whole um, formula, but we kind of took everything out of there and just uh, bullet listed it. So um, Tim Mountain, Mike Dufalo is doing Tim Mountain with fourth, fifth, and sixth graders this year. Um, and he's looking at um, Tim Mountain through the lens of the, of the process connecting to our social studies <coughs> and science curriculums. Um, and so it's connected to um, natural resources, trees, granite, mining, um, natural history, yeah. landscape. Immigration. Um, yeah, and, and so those, no, that's immigration, not, that's not on his. Yeah. But so, those, so those are the things, um, and then you know tying it to our social studies, other field trips that we're looking at are um, going to Livermore, to the more Northern Forest Heritage Park, um, the Amistad Mill Museums, um, and that ties in all of the things that happened in New Hampshire using New Hampshire um, natural resources and all of that kind of stuff, um, and then some smaller field trips for sixth graders to the Garland Mill, um, a tour of local timber frame structures um, with you know an expert or two to look at those kinds of things. Um, and then the sixth graders would be involved in the communication, like I already said. Um, John's already talked with Don Johnson, who's a forester, um, about doing some forestry stuff up on um, the- um, Either prospect or, yeah. or other sites mm -hmm. around. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> County. Um, and um, we're hoping to make art connections for architecture and design and a lot of different things. Um, the science and math connections are um, pretty kind of blatantly simple machines, levers and pulleys and all of that kind of stuff as we build towards that. Do we have a budget on this? Is it yeah, our year, year last year, year we gave you a potential budget. No, I, nothing's changed from that. Nothing's changed from that. that. You know, and that's all contingent upon being able to get community support and and all that that kind of stuff. So, Gail, if you scroll down, and we're using our field trip. You know, obviously we have a field trip budget right. and all that kind of thing. 
So it's all that thing, um, you know, we talked about last year, um, Kevin, you know that happy little picture that was on my board, I don't know where it went now, it's over behind Gail somewhere, with the um, competency-based learning and activities, making activities connected, so all of the activities and all the things are then connected to the bigger picture, just to put that in there. Um, so we started a list of questions, um, you know, doing some more fundraising, can student council help with that, this kind of stuff. And then we made a list of community connections we've already made, um, and um, people who can provide educational stuff. Um, Curtis Milton, I don't know if anybody knows, Curtis, he's a master timber framer. He's an incredible mind. He's got a lot to share with kids, with a lot to share with us. Um, and, you know, he's very knowledgeable, but, you know, he would be somebody who could take the sixth graders around and talk about the difference in timber frame structure in the covered bridge and the library. Um, you know, and it would be really, really kind of cool thing for them to do. Don Johnson, we already mentioned. Um, John McDougall and Chris Doctor already came in once last year. They're both willing to come in again and do some um, um, math and art-related um, architecture stuff. Um, and um, then the educational stuff. Um, I have emailed every single teacher at the um, tech center, um, at Career Tech, um, that, and um, Paul Kale, who does a building trades, we're hoping to be able to get him and his students involved a little bit, make some connections with those guys. Um, um, Joe Rinsdale, who's, I think, for some reason I must have missed his name. Um, Joe does um, the um, CAD, so he already started with a student last year, mm -hmm. um, doing some CAD stuff there. Um, and Andy um, Shaw's gonna do some welding. We'll, we'll have hinges that Make the raising safer. Make the raising safer. Um, and Andy's on board with that. With um, And there's actually a young lady welder in the um, advanced those classes here, so that's kind of exciting. Um, girls in the trades. Um, and um, so then other construction, you know, so other, like, um, professional help, um, local carpenters and builders, um, Stephen Weeder, um, Brian Byrne, Dudley Davis, Murph, Jeremiah Beach, all those guys that work around town. Um, and then in terms of timber frame construction, John's cousin Chris, my brother, and um, Jeremiah McCray Hawkins, who lives up in Wakefield. Um, and then, yeah, all the other names are then Stephen Cooney um, to help us with the roofing. The roofing. Might be some uh, Jackson alumni in the building trades. Well, yeah, and Dale, and we talked to him about Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some Jackson, yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. So 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 Phase one and moving towards phase two, which is prep and getting thing out ready. All the beans are all outside and ready to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a couple more that still need to be cut, but we're, we've been kind of holding off and waiting to bring the, the children up to my my house to watch the final milling of the beans. And okay. if former sixth graders want to, like seventh graders want to come back because they were part of this, it would be great fun to be part of that tour anyway. Yeah, we should say that we, Joe Mountford and Joanna are both very supportive yeah. of um, sharing their kids um, with the parts of the process where we can work things in um, with so, them too. So to show that their work that's been done in the past is still is moving forward. So, so just to back up, so the next step is getting the, the drawings and then put out to bid for the concrete. The, uh, the well, building permit. Yeah, well, yeah, so first we need a building permit, and then, yeah, and then, yeah, essentially it's putting up to bid for concrete. We're yep. kind of hoping that we say we have $300 for you, but you give it to us for <laughs> <laughs> no, right. we're, we're, yeah, we're kind of hoping the kids well, kind of the site yeah. worked out ahead of time yeah. by us. Yeah. 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 Um, quick question. Um, I understood that when the school board accepted this, it was going to be completely volunteer based and no budget. 
Yeah, we have not agreed to pay anything at, nope. at this point. Yeah, it's not. Okay, well, you mentioned earlier a budget, so they, they oh, have how, have much we are, how much we think we will we'll spend, but we'll, we won't ask this district for any money. Yeah, we won't ask the district. Well, logistically, we still Probably. spend the money. It's just we didn't appropriate it for mm -hmm. tax assistance. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we fundraise for any money that we want to spend. Okay. And then somebody up there signs the check. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it gives a zero cost for the engineering designs, but still had to go through. Yeah. yeah. No, tell me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, something that may interest you foundation wise. Uh, have you seen the uh, insulated concrete forms? Yes, yeah. It may be something that. Yeah. Uh, Gail, yeah, well, can you put um, Andrew Light on that list? Yeah. <laughs> Andrew Light. Yeah, well, I don't know anything about the foundation. It was something uh, yeah. where if it was dug out your uh, perimeter, oh, you could actually set your footer oh. and essentially more like Lego blocks, build it yourself, build it in, yeah. and then just have the contractor <laughs> come literally dump the concrete, and if you're only doing a footer, yeah. it be that we're only doing piers, actually. Yeah, we're just doing piers, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a design for the piers right up right up on the on the picture up there, so there's just okay. eight points of contact all down. Yeah, you can make that yeah. too, and we just yeah. pour it right on all rebar it out. So. Yeah. Andrew, if you have anybody who you think would be a really good um, person who could talk to us and might want to talk to you about that? The site's been prepped for his lab if you ever wanted to do it. We're going to keep moving into the rest of our meeting. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, the listening post, um, this one we're talking about having a middle school, high school listening post. Um, and I think we're talking about trying to schedule that for October. Um, but still, mm -hmm. well, should, as we mentioned, yeah. and should we do that before our school board meeting? Like we did, we already have a double meeting. Yeah, the we have a meeting. Do we um, meeting? It's okay. Um, <laughs> um, to probably target a different date then. Right, just do November. November, sure. What date is that? Is that the thirteenth? Hmm. That actually might be better. Mm -hmm. okay. <coughs> anyway, because. Gives everybody a good chance to get to the first quarter and yeah. you know, bring up any new students, sure. new family, and yeah, the board's meeting on the 20th of November. You could do it prior to that if you'd like. Uh, is that five o'clock. Is that the Monday before Thanksgiving? Yes. It is. Uh, Ooh, that's not usually good for people. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I might not even be here. Right. <laughs> we tend to have a, a few people that travel. Can we move that whole meeting up? Um, I mean, we're not supposed to talk about that till next month, but can we move that up a whole week? Move it to November 13th. Mm. Can you make that, Kevin? I'm not uh, on book, but. I can't make it. As long as you guys bring me a birthday cake. You can't make the 13th. <laughs> <laughs> the 13th's out. Um. Sure. Well, any day that week work prior to Thanksgiving um, week? I could do the 15th. That's a Wednesday. You want to just change everything to Wednesday or just have the listening course? Wednesday's, Wednesday. any day is fine with me. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter to me. It's just how we get the word out. And how Wednesday works for me? Wednesday? Wednesday seems to work. I always like having it before the school board meeting. Should too. we just suck it up and have it that day? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think you have a better chance of getting people here because there might be some people who are going to come to the meeting anyway. If it's yeah. right. yeah. strictly just a listening post, we might not have anybody show right. up. I, yeah. I agree. I think. Yeah. So could okay. we just move them both to the fifteenth? If that works for everybody. Right? Anyone anyway, you think you usually? I, yeah, I was going to ask what's the listening post, right? Uh, for middle school families and high school families to come give any input on okay, yeah, so concerns, questions. Oh, that's why I was here tonight. <laughs> so, Penny, this actually came out of some of the work that we did last year where we had talked about having these listening posts, talking about the sixth grade, which we did at the end of yep. last year. And then um, I think um, Keith rightly mentioned that we also are responsible for the middle schoolers and high schoolers, so let's look at that too. And I think we all kind of looked at it like it was something that we really should touch base on. You know, we all hear it just gives an opportunity outside the board meeting to delve a little deeper into something that we're not afraid we're using all this yep. time. Yeah, yeah. So. great. I can come. You don't have to wait till then. I, mean, <laughs> I did have one thing I want to make in public comment or ask. Is that meeting at 5 or 5.30? What did you? Is this the October meeting?
This no, is no, November. No, 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 November. I would say the rest of the That's my birthday. Birthday cakes and music. This is Tim. <laughs> I don't like hearing it now, too. We might be doing an unpopular stuff. Yeah, we should come back after that. Yeah, exactly. If we get this from high and low, I'm so good. If we can get this, so we get there at 5.30. I have a lit November 15th, a listing post at 5.30 with a topic being high school and middle school, We're followed by a board meeting at 6 p.m. Yep. On the 15th. Of November. of November. And will we do that in here or at the Whitney Center? I think like in here. In here. Yes, that's correct. And you don't need me for the listening post, just for the board meeting? Is that correct? Correct. correct. Yeah. Okay. And Hank, whatever you want to do too, is fine. Okay. All right. So the October 16th, 5.30 joint meeting, regular 6 o'clock meeting. Yep. Got it. Okay. And then our 11:20 meetings is gone. Correct. Got it. Okay, thank you. Um, and Penny, did you have a question or comment you, you wanted to make about? Uh, uh, I was one thing I wanted to ask is being a fresh a parent of a freshman at Kennett um, and learning the communication from the school. And this is most probably for um, he, um, Mr. Richard Kevin mostly. Um, is that I, I'm, I'm figuring my way around Kenneth, but it's really slow and it's really painful. And one of the things that is extraordinarily painful is the website. <laughs> and I was just wondering, is there, you know, what's the Jackson School Board, what's the Bartlett School Board's role in advocating for town parents and in relation to the Conway School Board? I know we don't have anybody who can sit on the school board, but I mean, it, like, you know, the, the website is so horrendous, you can't even, I can't even look up a club to find out if my child's even might be interested in it because it doesn't exist on the web the website. You're talking about the high school? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, and I can't believe I'd be the first one to bring it up. I mean, everybody I've spoken to has agreed that it's horrendous, and I think, I don't know if people have just suffered through it, or <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, part of it. change it every year. I mean, and I think it's something that it might be the kind of thing people could come and comment towards at the November 15th yeah. meeting. Um, and because I've tied that right into guidance as well. And it's, um, we talked about last, when we had the staff meeting, um, one of the things we were talking about was to be entertained the idea of having a, a mentor or guidance person um, specifically for Jackson students that are in middle school and high school. And you know, we'd be on. Yeah, that's big. Yeah. Well, I know that we do. I was like, we, we were talking about having one specifically for you know our own kids yeah. and having that. Um, type of thing. It might be something for us to talk about and consider. Anyway, yeah. is, is that because I mean, I don't. And no matter what you do for a website, it's it'll never be perfect. <coughs> no, but it seems like if you put a couple freshmen in charge of it, it'll be pretty good. But I think that's what they, they, what they do is <laughs> that the, the, um, the Vogue Tech School puts out the ones that don't need the department. No. In, in a, I guess my recommendation would be to let the high school know. They did go through redeveloping about two years ago. They spent, I don't know, God's a lot God's, of money yeah. at the high school to develop the website. Yeah. And I'm sure they would appreciate feedback. As a newbie, newbie looking at it. Absolutely. So I'm, like after the orientation with the kids, um, you know, I came, it was, you know, it's every, all the freshmen walking around and there's clubs, uh, tables, you know, French club and key club. And, uh, you know, I brought my son home. I said, look, let's look up mountain club, mountain biking club. I've heard about that. And, and we said, let's look at all these clubs and see what you might be interested in. And there's no information on them. Nothing. So who's the um, contact person? To I, I would call the principal of the school. Okay. Yeah, or the administrative assistant. Yeah, yeah. Kevin's really right about that too, because that type of thing that actually isn't really a board issue, um, or one that a board would really get involved with necessarily. Um, and when it comes to our students in Bartlett or our students in the Conway High School, um, both principals have always said to us, it's they're not Jackson kids then no. you know it's it's they're part of the school yeah um, and when you have questions about the school itself they'll treat you just like they will any other whether they're a Conway parent a Bartlow parent or a Madison parent it's it's all the same to them so yeah. and I think it'd be a great perspective for an incoming high school parent to yeah. say geez this was a particular concern for me was I would have liked to have known about 
clubs and offerings for our students and maybe they did maybe they did do that during orientation or I don't know but if if you had difficulty finding it I'm sure they would appreciate that feedback yeah and, okay. and, and Neil Moreland will call you back no, uh, he, he, he is very good about that and maybe a lot of parents and he Really does right. a good job. Well, this is good because I haven't really, you know, it's like, who do I go to? Who and maybe that's to? a discussion we can have with Bartlett too. You know, maybe we can do a better uh, with Bartlett a better job at the end of eighth grade year, but maybe covering a few more of those things yeah. instead of you having to wait to go to the high school. Maybe they can be handed a list of the clubs and who's in charge and how you contact them. I, I don't know, but you know, maybe yeah. those are things that yeah. can be done too before you get there. Good for the listening post. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah this is perfect. Thanks, buddy. Um, Instructional issues, any at this point? None that are under. And John, John, I won't consider it rude if you guys leave. <laughs> 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 Thanks for coming by. Yeah, thank you. You got like 12 kids in one. Yeah, I know. You make 15 more minutes if you've been there. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. Is that a no on instructional issues? I'm sorry. No, nothing. Okay. Um, personnel actions. Um, when is open or closed? It's kind of Why don't you leave, leave, leave it open? Thanks. Um, okay. I would uh, entertain a motion to accept the resignation of Gary Allen. Page motion. Second, with regret. Yep. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, oh. No, I accept it. I just didn't. Um, no, go ahead. Oh, well, we can talk about it. We won't talk about it much. We should probably do it. Not well, I was going to say, I just, we obviously need to address this, or at least someone is. So I would just want to know that because we didn't know. So that's all. So non public is fine. Or, or if you have already, if our committee's already looked at it, just. Just tell me someone has addressed this issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll feel better. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. They have addressed the issue. Got it. Um, so just the vote. Yeah. All those in favor? Let's see that. Okay. Thanks. Um, the entertain a motion to approve the job description for the elementary school principal position. So moved. Second. Um, has everyone had a chance to look at this yet? Yeah. Um, I think Kevin and Gail have discovered in the contract process that the job description hadn't been updated since, what, 1983, I think? 83. 1983. <laughs> um, and so a lot of this is really just, just housekeeping um, to do what we should have done two decades ago, I guess, but at this point. Uh, well, Right, but at least two decades ago. I, know, I, <laughs> I haven't been here that long. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions, comments, or concerns? No. Oh. No, I think it looks good. So this this is removing part of the older responsibilities. Is that they were old, outdated responsibilities? Yes, that were no longer applicable. Right. It also allows for a more dynamic position mm -hmm. as we move forward. Um, we did present it to the, uh, you know, the personnel committee. We reviewed it, so it really allows for more flexibility in assignment of those responsibilities. So this would be. Not a teaching position, though. Not a teaching principal anymore. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, is that something we need to discuss further in a separate meeting? Because the responsibility. Okay. Well, it yeah. would be in terms of Gail's contract, but this really just is a keeping this really just isn't about Gail. This is just a job description for <coughs> principal position. So, got it. Okay. I don't think it ties into that necessarily. Just That's going to be part of that a different discussion. Book thing. I got you. Um, okay. Yeah. I got you. Okay. But no, that's a good question. Is, um, but yes, in terms of that, that's we were thinking of moving towards just a principal position as opposed to a teaching principal. Okay. Um, but that's not necessarily. This is, is this. This covers the 
principal principal position piece. regardless of whether it's a straight principal or a teaching principal. Right. Yes. Okay. I got your principal portion of yeah. the principal. So technically, it doesn't cover Gail because she signed her contract before we made that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so all that Amy stuff, you still got to do it. She used to rotary dial. <laughs> so if you still have to pay the course. The abacus to the other That's right. Make sure you <laughs> fill the <laughs> coffee with ink. <laughs> the blue ink you used to put the wood or whatever. Fire wood first. And this is literally something that we can always revisit and sure. make changes to as we go along. At least we don't have to be embarrassed to bring this out. Somebody asked us from another district. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So, so are we vote? all in favor? Yep. And, uh, all those in favor? Unanimous. You do have item 7C, Jerry, that I walked in. It's um, election of Dennis Sackwell as a 50% custodian. So I'm going to a motion for the election of Dennis. So I'm going to have to have a custodian. Second. Discussion? Questions? Uh, so he still works up there, or he's leaving there to come here? It's a White Mountain Hotel. At the Christmas Farm Inn? No, he's at the White Mountain. Um, I thought the said Christmas uh, Farm Inn. He does a little bit of work there on occasion. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I understood his main employment is the White Mountain yes. Hotel at this point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All those in favor? Adams. I've lost my. Um, budget status report. Any questions, comments about where we're at? FYI correspondence from the auditor. Uh, and the report there. Just now, just yeah, that's an annual um, outside audit that comes to the district, and you'll see that uh, they don't have any concerns whatsoever, and really nothing that needs to be addressed for me reporting standpoint they come in in the summer and spend a couple days taking a look at each each school and all the books they're not the doing send the us the questionnaire the three questions every summer that's right yeah they don't really look at the they're not looking at our numbers as much as they're looking at our process for how we do the budget yeah. you get a survey every summer uh, yeah exactly yeah. administrative reports yeah, a couple things. Just uh, you answered one of my questions. Well, this is uh, developing a warrant article for the 18-19 budget around preschool. Um, also, Jim Hill and John Stokey have been in communication about the Whitney Center and potential <coughs> solutions. And I think what they're trying to do is see what works without committing big dollars to the Whitney Center. Mm -hmm. So whether it's... Uh, adherence of different materials or taking down one side to say okay we have these hardy planks that are just too heavy do we put in ring nails so, so they're they're in conversation and you'll probably see some um i don't want to say experimentation but but really some trials of of what the materials will be before moving forward and i know they've been on um in different conversations re related to that. Uh, no, great start to the school year. I, I, you know, I think that these teachers and the staff at all the schools do a tremendous job of, of welcoming in, especially those those younger younger children, and they hit the ground running. Building looked good. Nice to see the the front door with the card reader now. Card, yeah, yeah, it was amazing. I, John said. Bring your card up, and 30 seconds later, he programmed it, which is a nice feature for, for you folks. There is a, um, a town hall on education, Reaching Higher New Hampshire, and um, they're an organization, a policy group that is coming up to the Whitney Center on October 12th from 6.30 to 8 o'clock. And, and really, it's just a, uh, a roundtable discussion on the state of education. They, they go to a number of different schools, and you can subscribe to their, their website as well. And you do get a lot of policy briefings in the state of New Hampshire. Very worthwhile. I've been in communication with Dan Ballone. He reached out. Unfortunately, I have an executive board meeting on the 12th, but we'll try and get 
somebody from the SEU up here and probably extend it to Gail. But um, again, that's another listening post and, and he's, um, I think he's very supportive about educational change, which we've talked an awful lot about competency-based education and I think that that's right up the alley for um, meeting the needs of our students. So other than that, that's about all I have from my neck of the woods. Are you going to do another meeting? I missed the other one, unfortunately. For the core competency yes. Yes. Yeah, we have um, a couple of uh, meetings scheduled. We have one down in Madison because we have a community forum coming up that's on September 27th. And then we'll be having, much like we did with the strategic plan process, mm -hmm. um, we'll be inviting folks up to Ken High School in the auditorium. And we'll do an open forum and, and kind of some follow up. We did uh, put an article in the paper, and there's also Mm -hmm. uh, Valley Vision did a taping last Thursday, so that'll be on local TV as okay. well. So we're trying to get get the word out there. Yeah. Did anybody, not to be off record, but about the high school, did anybody else see that the TV show was on major networks? I didn't see any advertising. I have to be have <coughs> to turn it on when I it was on like two Tuesdays ago. Mm -hmm. It was on ABC, NBC, yeah, NBC. CBS. It was yeah. on all the major networks oh, at the yeah. same time, and it was a super, live it was a super school project. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was pretty. That would have been interesting to know beforehand that it was like oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It was, it was pretty interesting. I don't know if they're going to do a follow up now because it was just kind of rah rah. Yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, we talked an awful lot about that, and Gail will we'll kind of talk about that with the school goals. One of the, the key pieces we want to do is build some sustainability to make it not just an event, but but really make it make it last and, and meaningful for people. And, and I think that's what sometimes we'll see in education is these fads and these pieces. Mm -hmm. And, you know, technology was all the rage. Well, you can use technology and you can use it poorly. Um, so we want to make it grounded and rooted in the beliefs and attitudes of you know SAU and really personalize the learning. And I think that's that's number one meeting the students where they're at. But yes, we will be more than happy to send out the invitations, and you'll be finding out a whole lot more about it. I just want to make sure. Thank you. And you'll be hearing about it tonight. Uh, can I just follow up on that real quick? So. Uh, you know, one, thank you for bringing Fred Vermonte to that meeting because yeah. it was great to hear from him. And given the nature of that meeting, it wasn't the appropriate venue, but I would love to follow up and talk about how to, I think we have a lot of balancing to do because, and I was, Gail and I were talking about this because she did a presentation earlier to the PTO, but I, I'm not <laughs> mostly me. <laughs> and the, the PTO was there, but having the discussion about, there's really sort of a dual message between like what, what we could be in this exciting potential and then we're still stuck to a lot of mandates and all of these ideas and that's not to say those are bad it's just how do we move that discussion further particularly for Jackson because I think we have a flexibility and an, and an ability to be nimble that maybe the rest of the SEU doesn't have and is that something that the, SE, the SEU is interested in pursuing? Yeah. Oh absolutely I, I think in, in this is interesting the mandates in being a teacher, sometimes those mandates are things that we put on ourselves. And I think that in conversations with a lot of staff, you know, really, that's what hopefully this does is empowers teachers, who are the most important people in, in the education of these students, to be able to make good decisions for Pam, for Gail, for Jess, whoever it needs to be. In, in really, that to me is the most exciting part. But it's also the most overwhelming part if I were a teacher to be able to say, yeah, now I really have to, you know, manage the needs of all these students and cover all this curriculum. But when you take a look at the difference between the standards and competency-based education, you know, there's this pressure that people put on themselves that I have to cover, you know, chapter 1 through chapter 35. And... We're trying to relieve that pressure from there. In in sometimes it is self-imposed. Sometimes it's old traditional values or parental pressure that comes down. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's you folks sitting on this board, whether you know it or not. Sometimes it's me in the central office who 
who does that. So it really is that, that balance, if you will, and that's going to take some time to get people to be able to do that. One of the things that works very well in Jackson is they have these students for more than one year, mm -hmm. and they get to really know the needs of those students. So to empower them to be able to say, okay, this is what's in the best interests of this student. Does it change the way that I have to approach my classroom? You bet. But that's, that's the paradigm shift for a lot of people. So, just as far as our strategic planning goes, sure. will will we will we be follow? Will we be? What are we doing from there? From the last, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the goals and goals for the school, and then Kevin and I have talked about just for us. Okay, not for the SAU, just just for Jackson. So, Got it. but I had a few other things ahead of that. So, first off, the summer program. Uh, Kathleen Stone was new to us. She did a fine job of, of managing the program. This is the breakdown, as you've asked for before, of the number of students who attended, what grade levels they were in, and um, how many weeks they attended. We opened it up to two field trips this year, so that, that was feedback we've gotten in some of our surveys that the parents wanted to have more opportunity for the kids to go off-site and maybe swim. And so we had one day a week that we did that. We went down to White Lake and, and the kids swam and they hiked and they, they had a good time down there. And then the other field trip on Fridays was linked to the theme for the week. So those are the five, the five weeks, the number of kiddos. Um, and then she did a description for you of what the themes meant, the Amazing Race Art for Antics, kind of what the um, curriculum was that week and talked a little bit about the events. I won't go over all of them in the interest mm -hmm. of time. You guys can can read that, but um, it was very, very successful. We did our first um, counselor CIT, sixth grader going to Bartlett. We officially hired her. She came to faculty meetings with the counselors and um, had all the fifth graders dying to come back next year because they all want to be CITs. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the highlight. Any questions about the summer program? Oh, but I did see quite a few of the fifth graders, sixth graders, go coming back in, and they seemed really happy on the playground whenever I went by. And from the rumor mill out there amongst <laughs> the kids, they were having a good time as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They really did. It was. It was a good. Good summer. So, in addition to Kevin's giving you my like official on paper goals that he's going to be using, um, but I wanted to flesh them out a little bit more. Um, and based on also talking to you a little bit about some of the things we started next year that we're going to continue. Um, the primary goal is talking about the engagement and students being engaged and self directed by increasing the personalization. These conversations started when we worked with you last spring and then with the faculty again in June and how are we going to, um, you know, make our sixth graders want to stay here and make this school a really exciting place for them to be. So we heard all of that. As a result, we're exploring student-led conferences, which includes interest inventories and letting the kids be a real part of setting their instructional goals for the year and then um, meeting with parents to talk about what the goals would be, assessing them in the middle of the year, and then um, at the end presenting some kind of final product or portfolio to um, look at whether they've achieved those goals or not, why not, what might they have done differently, and um, to try to put more of the ownership of the learning in the hands of the children as, as opposed to um, the, the faculty. Part of that it was a directory we talked out, and you could see that Joan had already started to do that with the Pavilion Project, trying to locate resources within our community, people who could become mentors, people who can come and present, um, just making a stronger connection with the community. That was part of why we uh, called the annual theme Building Community, because we're building a pavilion, but we also want to build connections with the greater community and ask community members to join us um, as well. Uh, we started that with the kickoff cookout, inviting, I guess the Facebook group got a hold of it, and they got some of those folks you saw in the audience who have preschoolers came to our cookout with us, and um, we had the pastor and a number of, of community members who don't have children here that attended, so that was a nice connection. 
we're going to take a look at when I say ELO opportunities, those are extended learning opportunities, places outside of the building where kids can um, support their, their learning. And we are reading as a faculty book study, The Leaders of Their Own Learning. It's a great book that deals with just that. How do you empower children to assess themselves, to be more self-directed? How do teachers kind of let go of that control a little bit? and uh, put structures in place as a school for fostering that in, in the kids. Um, and then the student council is off and running again and hopefully will expand and be a little bit even more involved than with last year. We, we were a work in progress last year and we've hit the ground running. Um, the kiddos will continue to manage the all school meeting, not just running it, but actually planning it and, and inviting people to speak and um, being much more involved in the planning process there. The second goal was the PACE, which we've talked to you a little bit about, performance assessment and competency education. So we started this summer um, attending workshops with our SAU colleagues, but we are partnered with Pine Tree School because we already offer some um, multi-age classrooms and more performance uh, sharing of learning. They're doing student-led conferencing already. They've been into it for, I think, two years now. Mm -hmm. So um, we're kind of partnering yeah. up to them. That's going to give our faculty, um, other colleagues, and I think one of the teachers mentioned that, somebody outside of Jackson to be talking about what's working, what's not working with kids, and have a bigger professional com community to learn with than just um, our little that's good, my little uh, school here. There's a quality performance assessment. You know that part of the PACE project is to use performance assessments to evaluate the progress of your students as opposed to the Smarter Balance formal test. Um, we won't be ready for that for a couple of years down the road, but we'll be starting to look at how do you develop a quality performance assessment that's reliable, that tests what you expect it to test, and is um, replicable among other teachers. So we'll be working with st uh, teachers in schools across the state, not just within our SAU, to do some of that work. And then um, I have a, another handout here. Part of what we, um, should I keep one? Nope. Yeah. I where my master went and all my papers I'm shuffling here. So part of the leaders of their own learning is that you engage your students in their assessment processes and help them get a handle of their strengths and weaknesses in order that they can um, design their own path for how they're going to learn and what's going to help them as a learner. If you look at this circle of uh, little circles around the edges, you can see that we've already done standards-based um, standards grading here in the SAU and in the school. We've set learning targets, which is the same as the learning objectives that we've been talking about through the reading and writing workshop and math workshop. Um, the checking for understanding is something the teachers learned a lot about over the last couple of years with the reading workshop and writing workshop um, professional development that we've been doing. Um, using data with students will be a little new um, because we haven't often sat down with the students and said, this is how you've tested on this particular area, and then hopefully get them to engage in I need to do more studying, I need to hear it in auditorily, I need to move, you know, try to look at how they're learning. So that's a part of the new, um, what we'll be working on this year with the performance assessments and the performance-based um, inventories and such, and the student-led conferences. Yeah, just because you're on that subject, um, <coughs> are kids taking smarter balance tests this year? And Kevin, can you clarify this for us? I've heard yes. of the the, well, well, it's, not it's not smarter balanced anymore. It's a new company that they've contracted well, that's with. Well, I'm asking because the reason I'm asking is because it's it's you know we were trained we trained our staff for years on smarter balance. Now the state yanked that out, and what what are we getting for tests now? And are we getting less of them? Because I, I heard we're getting less as well, but they're shorter. From so what I understand, <laughs> they're they're shorter in length but they're still testing the same areas at the same grade levels for this year. Some of the schools who have matured more and have been doing PACE for two or three years, they no longer have to administer all of them. They still do, I think, three, four, and uh, five, depending on the subject area. The subject areas are kind of spread out, mm -hmm. so students won't be tested with Smarter Balance every year once you've moved completely into the PACE model. But you're not concerned about the 
tests coming in this year with your staff? I, I don't, I, we don't know because we haven't seen them. Okay. And it's hard to use comparative data when you switch right. instruments, right. which that's why I think the pace piece is, is extremely important. It's, it's, it's more appropriate geographically, it's more appropriate, and it's statistically <coughs> valid so that if our scores and what the teachers, it also takes teacher input into it as well, so it might say, okay, Pam scored this, where does, and then they get rescored by an outside group to validate those scores as well. Um, much more authentic, much more performance based, and much more personalized from, from year to year. So that is that control piece that I think will have more meaningful data to help drive student achievement and instruction later on. Sorry to pull you off. Well, and, yeah. and for us, it's the local assessments that we're doing, the running records, the math, you know, checklists and the spelling things that we do day to day that we use to design the instruction for the children. The bigger test, like NEWA, is one that's been consistent. It's been around a lot. Okay. It's normed. It's been used on thousands of children. So that's kind of our benchmark about, okay, are all of the kiddos in Jackson continuing to make about a year's gain, hopefully more, in a year? Um, so that's kind of the consistent test that we use here is the NWEA. And then the teachers depend more on their local in-class assessments to design their instruction. Um, more so than the smarter balance test or this new one. Yeah, we've got a we've got a fly that's in between. I think but with the new one though, the, the the idea is one, the company that they that they contracted with has been writing the questions mm -hmm. already for most of the smarter balance. So the idea is that they're gonna give some of the control back to local yeah, more local good. control, mm -hmm. which does sound a little bit scary, but one of the coolest things about it is that it's a really adaptable testing platform so that it it will challenge more as the kid or, or it will up the challenge as the, well not up the challenge because it's an equal challenge for all of them, but if you have a kid who say is testing at a seventh grade level, they will keep making the questions more difficult and they're also testing them in different ways. So it's not simply like is two plus two four. They have to show their work, they're evaluating in those ways. So it's meant to be more interactive and more personalized. Is that your reading of it? It is. It, it, they're, they're trying. They're trying. They're better than what they used to be. Let's put it that way. And they are more adaptive to to where students are. NWA does that too. If you get three questions wrong, it'll reprogram the. the and if you get three right, it jumps you up a little bit. Um, and they do have uh, multiple methods of assessment. So there is a performance task related to it, and um, and they are easy. But it, the problem is, is that when they change from year to year. It's hard to compare. There's a learning curve on the teacher's behalf, the student's behalf, and then they have to recalculate the cut scores. And right. Right. And so you just heard about the pavilion project. That's something that's going to be an ongoing goal for us to get that <coughs> raised and, and done. And then we continue to use Mind Up Work for our social emotional learning component. We'll be doing children's stage adventures in the spring. And we're talking about rather than having, having an open house, to be having students demonstrating something that they've learned and make it more student-led than um, open house where you come through and just look at the work. Yeah. Um, and of course, com community service projects, we're always about that. Uh, we've so far begun to raise money for Houston and to collect supplies for Houston. And I'm feeling like the faculty feels like some of the hurricane damaged areas of the country and the world would be suitable for any fundraising that we do this year. Thank you. Keep it local. Um, can I throw this out there as a goal? Um, and maybe it's premature, I think we need to maybe frame this process in a way that um, the question of sixth grade and what we do with them, um, with Bartlett having this the sixth grade in their middle school model next year, um, we need as a board, I think, more confidence in where our sixth graders are going to go. And I think that that's kind of it should be a goal for you to convince us where our sixth graders should be. Meaning, where do you think our sixth graders should be, and then convince us that that's what we should do. Um, 
And I don't know whether that should be a goal or not, but it's, it's, it's we're, we're, we're facing the right now. I don't know if that'd be a goal, but I would certainly look to Gail and the staff from an educational and emotional standpoint to be more of the expert on to where they should be. Well, the goal would be, I don't know if Gail fails. If you feel they should go, your goal is to prove to us that they should go. Right, that's what I'm saying. I don't, and I don't want to go. It should be to prove to us. I don't want to be from the staff. I think it should be from Gail. And, and okay. from the principal yeah. to convince us where our sixth graders should be. Um, and because we are, I, mean, I don't know yeah. if you are, but I am the boss of the system that the parents are community that are not kids in the world. And, um, See, I'm the opposite. People are like, we well, I've heard, I've heard yeah. people that want to keep them here, too. I mean, yeah. it, it does go both ways, but um, with what Bartlett's doing, and you talk about curriculum, just as an example, everyday math, are they going to be taught everyday math in sixth grade next year in Bartlett, but we will be here. I mean, that's just a question that we need to have answered, and that's what I mean by we need a process to convince us as a board where our sixth graders should be. And I, I, I'm saying that, that should be one of your, your goals, be able to do that. Like, just like figure out where you want our sixth graders, and then convince us that that's where they, they should be. Uh, if, can I just jump in for a second? I think I we need to hear from you, Gail, definitely. I mean, you and I, I just had this conversation right. this week right. um, because we're we're contemplating moving parts in some sense, especially with this preschool thing on, on the line. Uh, I, we, know, we don't set goals as a board, but that is something that and since last year I've been kind of pushing that we need, I personally thought we needed to look at preschool and sixth grade in tandem because one, they, they affect each other. and. I, I think we t need to take a little onus as a board too, to to look into the issue and decide. You know, I mean, we talked about you know there's really good research the top dogs. You know, you need to give those kids the sixth grade year, but there's also a lot of really good evidence that our kids thrive over at Bartlett. So, and some kids need a bigger pond, right? I mean, we hear that all the time in Jackson. <coughs> so, um, That's what's I'm, I'm just going to throw in there that I think we do need to hear from you, and that as with everything, I think that. However, the staff wants to weigh in, not necessarily to come to a board meeting, but we need to hear from that. But I think we need to do a little more on our part because we have, I mean, you and I have had a number of conversations about it, right? And But I haven't, we haven't really spoken as a board, and I haven't heard from anyone. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, we need to come up with a process to, to, yeah. to go through this, but um, there's a lot of information. That's what I'm saying. I'm not sure it's appropriate as a goal for Gail to do this, right. but, but one thing I want out of, out of Gail is. She needs to come to us and tell us, right. can this sell us on, on where our kids should be? Because we're hearing it from everywhere. And it's, I'm I guess I'm trying to give you the opportunity to do that to us, to say like, hey, this, you know, we're, I guess, at least I myself as a board member, the, I'm thinking about it. And I don't know yet where the best place for our sixth graders is, are. And I think it's important that, I guess you know that, and I think it's, it, it is a type of goal to be, you know, to convince me where they should be. Um, and maybe this isn't the right format for it, because I think we do need to have an overall process to determine that question, where do our sixth graders belong? Um, but the clock's ticking pretty quickly yeah, on right. that, on us. Um, and, um, I mean, is, I, would, I would love to have more information from you about the kinds of reasons, like what are they telling you are the reasons, what do they think they're going to get there, that they're not getting here? What are the you know, factors that they're most concerned about? Three of you now have kids, well, four of you now, <laughs> but um, have children there. And, and what are you seeing? I'd be interested in, you've got kids that they, I know I go over and visit there, and I've got my own impressions, and I think like anybody, there are things they do really well, and then there are some other things. That, I think my um, biggest concern from a board member is not, and, th and this is what your job is, right. and your job is. I'm not really looking at it as an educational, what's better for them educational. I don't know that answer. For me, as an outsider who knows zero about education, the things that I would look at is, I want to know as a parent is, okay, my kid's going in in seventh grade, where they're starting in sixth grade, is that going to be okay? What's he, what's he missing? What are they doing? How are we going to make sure that we're on the same page? Socially, are there going to be issues he's, he's been out of loop for a whole year, he's going to join in a year through. What about soccer? Is soccer going to go to four, five, th two, three, four, five? Is there going to be a soccer team there? Are we going to have a soccer team here? Are they going to ask us to send our kids over there to play sixth grade middle school sports now? I mean, these are all the things that we, for sixth graders. <laughs> 
But, yeah. like, but sixth grade sports is, a, is an issue. Yeah. Like, where, are, where is Bartlett's sixth graders going to play sports next year? Like, that's a question that we need to ask Bartlett. Right. So I mean, that, that's, a, like, that's the kind right. of work that we as a board need to do. We have prepared a joint meeting to, to be bombarded with some of these questions, yeah. too, at our joint meeting with Bartlett. Um, and that's just it. Like, this is going to start steamrolling at us pretty quickly. And just one component of all of the things that we need to do as a board, um, the, I think that you know, one of your goals should be to convince us where our sixth graders should be. Yeah. Um, like, is French going to be? I don't mean that you'll be successful in that, but I guess. Um, <laughs> well, if you have a position, to advocate for it because exactly. you value your. Exactly, and that's what I said. I mean, you know, so you might say it's not going to affect your job, and you yeah. need to, um, you know, to hold people like you. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that's what I'm trying to do is the opportunity yeah. to do that. And how do we do that? Is it through your goals? I don't know. Maybe that's the wrong format to consider it in. Um, but I mean, like for instance, like what Kevin. Um, and Katie might recommend to us as a board might be different than what you do, and we need to be open to, to that idea um, and to consider that. So we, and I guess what I'm trying to do is we're going to have to have a conversation about this, and the, the easier that conversation is, I mean, the less kind of um, anxiety there is in that conversation, the better. Um, and, and that's why I don't know where the best format for, for this is, but... Um, you, I, I guess, it, advice is that you're going to have to advocate for where you want the sixth graders to be um, over the next couple months, um, and I guess just to be aware of that. Do we have um, a deadline by which we need to make a decision? Are we looking at like a no. December deadline for no. next year? Is it over? There's no deadlines. Oh, okay. Well, the only well, thing I mean, would be okay. budgetarily. Yes. Budgetarily, if we wanted, but there's no nobody has said you need to decide right. by okay. this date. No, but, right. Right. But, we, but we can in our in our May meeting of somebody like, yeah, we want to have our no. kids in Bartlett in January the, right. in no. the fall. Because uh, January has already started some transition pieces. I know, like for instance, Ferry Beach. We're discussing that right now. He would like to send his fifth graders on our sixth grade trip. Now we have some concerns about that's been a sixth grade trip. Even like Joan's son goes there, but she's still concerned about him going away with the sixth graders. But he's looking at that as transitioning them in. So there are some transition pieces that are happening already. And, and I like know as faculty is discussing curriculum and, and advisories <coughs> and things of that nature. Um, you can tell they're gearing up for it because their advisories have like six kids each in them right now. But I mean, like that's just like we right. know that like um, that you know, like our staff works a lot with Conway for curriculum coordination, but if we need to be more concerned about our sixth graders being coordinated with Bartlett's middle school, and it's just stuff like you know if Joan and John are communicating with the staff there, it might be helpful yeah. to, to let us know that yeah. they're doing that, yeah, they so that the that the transition from sixth grade here into seventh grade in Bar that, that's what I'm most concerned about yeah. is when our kids transition out of sixth grade from here and go into Bartlett at seventh grade when their sixth graders are already in that middle school environment that's my biggest concern and I guess what I need is to have reassurance and confidence built back into me that what we're doing for our sixth graders here is they're going to transition into the Bartlett middle school just fine already but you know, but their first year middle school is going to be seventh grade and so how is that transition going to work? Um, and that means, I think, a lot of coordination between our staff and Bartlett's staff to facilitate that. And maybe that's already happening, maybe that's happening behind the scenes, but I guess what I'm saying is some of that might need to be told to us so that we understand that it's happening. I think and we haven't planned that transition because there's no decision made to send them. Um, so that's why well, I think we still need to make sure that they'll be prepared to jump in a third of the way through. You're like French, do we know? Is Bartlett going to start offering middle school French to the sixth graders, or are they going to make them wait till seventh grade? I don't know those answers. So, I mean, those so if they are going <laughs> to offer to the sixth graders, does that mean we should have French? Well, but already the, the French that our kids have, they go in seventh grade, and they are <laughs> way ahead. Right. Well, now we have Spanish, don't we? Well, we don't have French. But just language, language in general. Like, I mean, our, our kids are getting I know, there. That's what the thing we're talking about. Already way ahead. But that's what I'm talking about. Are our, six, are our seventh graders going to have to go in the sixth grade class to take their French, or are they going to let them jump right so in? So we the second? obviously we have some questions mm -hmm. to be asked. Yeah. So we could go round and round about this yeah. all night, but we're here two hours already. Yeah. <laughs> so I still have games to pick up, but I think that regardless of all that, I think we have some questions, and maybe each of us could write down some of these questions for the joint board meeting, not only in figures and numbers, but because I have some notions already as to what they're doing or not doing myself and I would like to have that you know tested 
if you know, ask them the question instead of just bringing it up here. So, so I think at our joint board meeting, we should all come with some questions. It's on. Is it on the agenda for the joint board meeting? Uh, I can put it on the agenda. But yeah. like right now, as a board member, I'm leaning towards <clears throat> we need to send them. And, and I want somebody to tell me, no, we don't need and, to. Uh, and that's what I'm just trying to be honest about, too, because right. I'm in that same boat, and I don't want to be. I don't want to either, but right now I think we have no... See, but on the flip side, I've heard that their sixth grade is just going to be called the middle school, but they're not going to be oh, incorporated. Well, they're going to be in the advisories. We don't know from, that. Yeah, Joe has said that. Uh, they're going to be in the advisories. Yeah, but what else? So anyway, so we have some questions. So I, I think, in fairness to Gail, also, um, maybe it doesn't need to be an absolute. Either they go here or there. I think the first thing you want to find out is what's lacking. You know, what What are, because on both sides, you may say, the model might be to collaborate a little bit more with sixth grade before you get to seventh grade. You know, it doesn't have to be all in or all out. You're right. Does sixth grade go play soccer? Yeah. They, they well, we, we have Can you do science for a couple weeks? And the more you do that, then the more people are going to be sitting here saying, well, can't we just send them there? They're over there all the time anyway. I mean, that's what it's going to show why yeah, it's valuable so why to keep them here in sixth grade. And we don't know why right now, so we want to be told why. I think it's what Jerry was saying. Well, you seem to have good questions. From an educational standpoint, there's lots of non-educational issues where I would say it's we have to send them. Yeah. But uh, t so tell me the educational reasons why we shouldn't that's send them. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, and that's yeah. I think that's yeah. And, and if if I can just throw in like a little bit of a spin to make it more complicated. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean. I think that this is an opportunity because to, if you really are fully embracing this whole Fred Bermonte philosophy, there are some very special things about the Jackson community that m maybe we don't know are, are being tapped. I mean, I, I see a lot of changes even from last year in response to things we've said, so thank you for that. Mm -hmm. But um, this could be an opportunity for Jackson to do something very special and unique and it might put us out of our comfort zones. I mean, I will say, as someone who's outside the system, but I do consider myself a professional educator. I got paid to educate. I'm home educating my kids. I spend my life working on this. I'm not as worried about those transitions as I know some of you are, because I think that kids are resilient, and I think that they are, they will adapt to whatever we set up for them, as long as we put, as long as we help them. But I'm not saying just throw them to the wolves, but um, I, I think it's worth a conversation just to talk about, are there ways where, I mean, is it possible to take to keep our sixth grade here and do something, some more things with them than we've done with them in a more formal way? So, you know, if it's connected, being better connected to Bartlett or better connected to Conway or better connected to whatever it is, can you just consider that when you're presenting to us? Because I, I find the evidence <coughs> about keeping kids I, that sixth grade year, keep letting those sixth graders have that last year to be those top dogs. I find that compelling, and I don't want to throw it to the side just because we're worried about curriculum or transitions. So right. I'm just going to answer. So <laughs> who's the thought yeah. on that, on the sixth grade year being special? Yeah. We just voted mm -hmm. on preschool. Yeah. If the church says no, yeah. you can have a five, six class now every year. I'm, I think that's debatable. Not necessarily. Because pretty good chance. Um, well, I am not. I am yeah. not putting the preschool with the kindergarten. Just so you know. I'm not saying with the kindergarten, but now you got an extra class. Right, but we're going to keep five grades. No, no, we've had five, 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 six classes before. But you know, yeah, just right. before you came on this board, instructed right. them last year. We do not want that. No, I get that. No, no, I understand. So I'm just saying. We just so say we want to stand a little. But on this point alone, on the top dog thing, they were still the top dogs even when there was a five, six class. Yeah, and not. Yes, moving them to just a sixth grade I think is also good, but that didn't that didn't suddenly now they're top dogs because they're by themselves. They were top dogs yeah. when it was a five six class. No, I know, and I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we just gave her a mandate right. last year that we wanted sixth grade but all by themselves. that mandate it's, it's so unclear it's on the I know. It's just to me like it, 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 it's, it's a standalone sixth grade doesn't necessarily mean that they're in a classroom by themselves. Yeah, you know, it, I'm it, just saying the challenge. It means that the curriculum is a sixth grade curriculum. <laughs> I'm talking about but, the, the but that's challenges. challenges. But we need to be much more clear with Gail in, in the instructions that we give her because, like that whole mandate thing, was completely unclear. Um, we, we went for over two years; it was so unclear that you know, that you know, things unfolded, and that's really our fault. And that's why you know it's important that we keep things you know like that make it more clear. It's like you know just because the five six is in the same classroom, because when it comes down to staffing that five six classroom, we really want the sixth graders to have more of a separate. Um, curriculum in that, maybe we have to make sure we have the right staffing in that room for or eight or whatever it might um, be. Yeah. Um, 
I, I was just more making a point. That, no, no, I was just more making a point that there might even be more challenges that come against us now if the preschool ends up in this building right. as far as preparing the sixth graders to enter in a third of the way through middle school. That's all I was saying. Um, and I don't even know, maybe is it too late to try to talk to Joe for that October 16th meeting to try to get maybe a, a couple of middle school staff members and maybe a couple of our sixth grade staff members so we can have a discussion with everybody there on some of these things? How do you guys envision this? Because, you know, how else are we going to know when we hear it right from Joe and the middle school teachers? Oh, yep, sixth graders are going to be taking French 1. Or, nope, mm -hmm. sixth graders are not going to be offered French 1 not to get to seventh grade. Okay, that alleviates that problem. Nope, we're sticking with 5-6 soccer. We're not going to ask the sixth graders to come play middle school sports unless it's a numbers issue. Like, we don't know what they're thinking. So, like, well, I would hope, I would hope before, because I think that's a good idea, but I would hope at least for the October meeting, Joe should have some of those answers on his own at this point. And then if we start moving down the line with this discussion as to, okay, we're really starting thinking more about going there, then you bring in the yeah, staff so on both sides and start, and start about that coordination, yeah, whether it's mean, part yeah. or, or whole. But I think Joe should have a lot of those answers. Should. I would certainly hope he would have some of those answers. Because yeah. uh, it sounds like we're more concerned about curricular at this point. Well, we have well, questions about curricular. I'm not concerned about that. No, 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 sorry. It's my we concerns questions. being questions right. about yeah. curricular, athletic. We're, we're outside of the... We don't have anything right now. We're outside of the <laughs> parental gut reaction. Yeah. I want him to go. I don't want him to go. Yeah. We don't have any information to have an opinion right now, really, is so could, the problem. Can we try to get as much information at the October meeting, make sure that's on the agenda, and then can we put it as old business for our meeting next month so that we can continue the conversation? Sixth grade uh, transition. Whatever. Sixth grade top fancy oh, way you want to put it is fine. Yeah, I wouldn't say transition. Okay. People will get nervous. And do you think there's work that needs to get done in between <laughs> now I and then? Well, you know. Because like thinking. you, I don't have answers about a lot of those questions. How exactly it's going to look? Who's going to teach what? How are they going to you know divide the kid? I I don't really know all those answers yet because it's going to be a change. From I can evaluate what they've typically done because I've been in those classrooms. I've observed. I've gone to Perry Beach. I've been there a lot, so I could speak to that. I don't know how much is going to change with the sixth graders and what they've planned. I don't have that information. So I think the first step would be to hear from him all of the answers to those questions and then I can evaluate a little bit better. Well, if this is what he's saying, right. they're going to have the opportunity for, this is why. Right. And we'll have more information about whatever happens with the preschool proposal and things like that. So, we can come back Lots to going on. Yep, and I still got several board member issues in the number 11. Um, and I wasn't quite finished with my principal's so just yet. so you know, yeah. <laughs> Joan and Kristen are presenting at the uh, Kristen McAuliffe Tech. Oh, really? Yes, awesome. they went last year as a staff and found that, well, geez, uh, we're using some things that, you know, we could share with people. So they will be presenting on Thursday, November 30th. And they're doing something about Flipgrid. Ah, what are they thinking? Using Flipgrid as a window into thought processes. Kristen Groves and Joe Heisler. So I'm oh, very, very proud of them. And uh, Nashua, is it? Concord. Manchester. 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 Awesome. It's a statewide technology conference that happens every year. They've been going. Them. That's really. great. Yeah, I'm nice. proud of them. And the robotics grant is just an FYI. I am writing a small robotics grant. Um, it's this money the governor put made available for robotics and robotics clubs in the schools. I'm in the process of preparing a grant application. So would that be for 2018? They actually Are wanted they to start for this yeah, coming year, right. although they're missing the start of some of the yeah. team right. things. So that's and that's awesome. for starting <laughs> robotics things, not it, it's for startup start club. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There. No, I'm done. Thank you. Uh, um, no citizens left for comments. Uh, board. I got, I got a couple. I think you and, and I, you and I overlap on one of them. Um, well, the first one I was going to have was the time, the school time, changing. Um, I don't know that we have a policy on that, but I can tell you, it feels kind of weird as a school board member when you have people outside asking you why the start and end times of the school changed this year and we didn't know, so I don't know. If Thank you, that would, be my, that would be my fault. I should have notified you guys. Gail, you did? Um, yeah, I contacted both Kevin and I to discuss it, and 
I don't think actually we do have input into when the start time ends. And stuff. We don't but have should. Which, well, actually we shouldn't. But what I should have done was at help. least let you know that it was happening. <laughs> yes. And I apologize for that. that that's no, that's okay. But I, I don't think we. Sh I think we should at least have an input is if it's going to change. I don't think we have, can say better. Oh, it's better to start at eight. No, I'm not saying that. But I think we should have if somebody wants to change something. I think we should have a. What, what are the official time? Well, doesn't what actually allow for that, and the law works pretty well the way it does. It? No, I mean that's silly. So when is it? When is it? I think Kevin is the one that has the authority to eight, say. The starting time stayed the same. Eight twenty-five has always been our starting time. Yep. Right. So yeah. It was um, three o'clock was our yep. dismissal time two years ago. Last year it was whenever the bus showed up, and it was sometime between yeah. five minutes and so like twenty that. minutes <laughs> past, and we weren't good with that. So um, the teachers were excited about having ten minutes of extra instructional time and agreed that they would have no problem staying till 315 so that way the bus is here the kids are dismissed and uh, oh, just a, yeah, yeah. Oh, we don't have any that you want to throw a little wrench um three o'clock in the day <laughs> yep that's when she stops teaching and then they have to prepare <laughs> that right, but, okay yeah so, so 245 I mean, but it's if you're if we're at instructional time it's still ending at three right so i'll, I'll call yeah. her on that tomorrow yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was, there was, and just to be fair, there was some questions about compensation, and we already yeah. had the longest day. And um, typically, our, our handbook says half hour before, half hour after as a guideline. So I informed all of them I would not hold them to the half hour <laughs> after that they yeah. could still. Well, don't, don't get me wrong; that was more. I mean, right. I, I'm never going to be the school board member that nitpicks <laughs> on five ten minutes of classroom time. Being having been a teacher myself, but. Um, I just thought that was kind of funny. I'll wait on my second issue if you want to go. The, the bus? No. Oh, then keep going. Well, mine's a joint one with Jerry, so it might take a little so, bit. So this, this might be finding more information, but uh, regarding um, Bartlett busing kids to Conway for uh, football and field hockey, mm -hmm. it's using a Jackson bus. Yeah. Um, so I'm not necessarily looking, I don't, not, regardless of how many Jackson kids are involved, if it's a Bartlett school program that the Bartlett school board has said, we're going to do this, why is it being, why is the Jackson bus being used? The same reason we support the high school, so transport the high school ski teams to Cranmore every day. Uh, Jackson I, bus. I'd like to back up on that one a little bit. First of all, like, is that confirmed? Like, yes. Is it the Jackson bus? I brought it up last year. No, this year with the football. I, I, I have not seen it with my own eyes. Yes, I, I have seen it. it. I followed the bus yeah. last year. I brought this up last year. It seems like it's a Jackson bus doing it. it we, we want to know why, I guess. Yeah, I, I can find that. I, I have no idea. And the high school does it, too. The high school does it once the ski team starts. They take them to Cranmore every day, which causes all of our kids on our bus mm -hmm. to be 15 minutes well, later. Than right, but, but they're at the high school and they're going by. Well, nobody asked us. us. I know, but, in our, in our, I yeah. that. but this is a circumstance where if it's our bus that goes up to Bartlett and then drives them to Conway, it that's that, that is in my mind also. That t I agree. That is different than on our way dropping kids. Well, it's to me it's worse because now all of our kids who don't ski, um, they now they're getting on fifty. Again, that, that's later. a different issue than, <laughs> than a bus that isn't just there going yeah. by and dropping kids off. But it's not either because well, it isn't. Uh, the the problem said neither, and the Bartlett bus goes to the high school. Because we knew that this, our bus was taking kids from co from right. the high school and dropping them off at Cranmore. We've, we've always known that. We knew that, right? Um, and we've been fine with the support. So at the end of the day, we can have that argument, but you've lost that because we haven't decided to change that. Mm -hmm. This one, though, is new to us. We didn't know it was a Jackson bus that's driving out of its way to Bartlett and then driving way out of its way to Conway. If it, so first of all, I want to know, is it a Jackson bus doing it? So I saw it. It was a Jackson bus. It said Jackson on the side, which is where I first saw it. Um, and um, if it is, we need to know why. And So when I brought up, I brought up at one of my meetings last year. And then when we looked into it more, we f that I was told that that particular day there was a bus issue and they had to send one of our buses. That was what was told when I brought th I brought this up. At, I don't know when, but last year, what if I mean? Yeah, maybe that's the case here. And then we, need a, we, need a, we need to find out yeah. what's going on. Yeah. But you saying that is that there's a ton of transportation things because you say that about the the school thing. We agreed to st about the ski team. We agreed to stop charging Bartlett tuition um, for that bus fee. Remember that bus fee? We used mm -hmm. to charge them. We agreed not to because they told us they're picking our kids up at the high school, so our bus doesn't have to go from here to the high school. Well, now 
We do. In the wintertime, the ski team goes on now our bus travels down there. So there's a lot of transportation issues that we've just let go. So we either need to jump on every so issue. That's me. Okay. Yeah. Well, have a committee meeting. <laughs> yeah, I don't have it. I bring this up every year. Nobody else is concerned about it. So I always let it go. Right, we're concerned now. Let's get yeah. it. I think I need to market your meetings a little bit. It's going to be like a five-hour meeting. Um, Okay. So you're going to follow up on it? We okay. have one more. I have, I have another thing, meeting. too. But no, I, I, I have one more thing that's just uh, uh, should be a quick just to you to get some more information. So I know, and I'm sure this has happened before, but I know the last two years Jackson has had a high school mm -hmm. student that has done a semester elsewhere and therefore withdrawn from the district for the fall semester. I know there was one last year, there's one this year. What happens with tuition? With, that's like, an easy one we pay for. We pay, we pay, pay, pay by attendance, though. We pay ADM. Yeah. If we have 80 kids in our high school, whether they're in Bangladesh or in Conway, they, if, it's, if they're a Jackson resident, we pay for their tuition to Conway, regardless of where they go to school. Well, but that's not true, right? No, but they're withdrawing the loop if, if they withdraw. withdraw. So it always lags a year behind. Okay, so if a student is there for 90 days out of the 180 days, you're billed for <laughs> half a year. So if they withdraw for 45 yeah, days, withdraw. the ADM is 0.75 okay. of a so is it so it's based okay. on that's why, that's, 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 that's why it's a right. year a year because in these cases the reason is because in these cases they actually were told that, or the, it's the district policy to have them withdraw from the district yeah. completely yeah. for that semester. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And they enroll somewhere else. And then they and they enroll somewhere else. Okay. And or they're homeschool. Or they're homeschool. And then when and then when they return, they re-enroll. Okay. And and it's otherwise, you're going to foot the bill. <laughs> right. Okay. okay. So that's now, that was my question. Great. Just a little further. <laughs> if sometimes they'll withdraw, but still stay connected with a teacher for a particular course, and then it might be prorated to yeah. one fourth of a day yeah. when they're away. That In these two cases, I'm thinking of it is a complete withdrawn semester somewhere else. And then they come back and read. And then, did their caregiver pay for that semester somewhere else? Yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. So that was not. We don't do any Check my bank account. Sort of <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for next next meeting, um, just to give you the heads up now, and we can probably get the contract out. Um, Keith and I met about Gail's contract. Um, we're going to recommend to the board that we approve her for. We approve the contract that we've written, which is a it's a two year contract that extends um, a year out from the year that it's in. Um, so we're going to recommend in October that and we've rewritten the contract um, so we can get the board members a contract in case people have yeah, any issues with the wording in it. Um, and then hopefully at the next meeting, either approve or discuss changes that we want to make to the contract. But to um, so the contractor out through the eighteen. 19 school year um, now and then go back fall back into the normal two-year contract okay. so that would basically mean like we'd be um, it was so it would be as though we rewrote the contract last April so retro for this year. yeah yeah and I don't think it would matter as the date that we actually engage in that but it would just be um, it would get you know, contracted for for next school year um, mm -hmm. and fall back into the normal two-year contract with the one-year extension halfway through. Right. Just before you came on, Andy, we let it expire. I don't know if you remember, every year yep. we would renew for, not the following year, but the year after. Right. We let so it now she's not under contract for next school year. We let it expire so that we could write a new contract. Right. And so we, the new contract's been written. Okay. We can review it and then... So our next meeting will be recommending that we renew it for the year after and then it will go back to June, I think, is when Kevin comes to us for... It's April 15th, I think we have to notify. Is it April 15th? Yeah, April 15th. For the following, for the following. year. Beyond for the year beyond. Yeah. Yeah. The year beyond the year. Gail, I just had a quick question. Any update on um, the sign out front being completed? John has been trying to reach the gentleman. has not been successful. He's going to do a knock on the door. And then maybe get somebody else. The, the best, uh, yeah. the best sign burn I've heard so far was uh, someone recommended that we offer the um, sign base as a place for the aquatic center to use. Camping goldfish in there—that's not allowed, right? 
And they yeah, one of the smiley faces I gave in your, in your thing that wasn't uh, nothing to do with your presentation. What is with the brown pen? Who do you, do you, uh, you had to stop using brown pens when you were in fourth grade. <laughs> but don't, don't use these. Uh, I have a brown pen. Well, purple. <laughs> I have a purple. 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 It comes in the pack, in the eight pack. Live a little. Are we good? Live a little. Um, <laughs> anyway, well, I hope so. Yeah. That's going to be October 16th. Dismissed. Um, 16, 5.30 p.m. Maybe you should make that meeting earlier. What meeting? Well, I, I think we, 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 there was a lot going on, but if you took out the preschool presentation and conversation, yeah. which I don't think was. No, I'm talking about the Bartlett meeting. Oh, okay. I thought you meant just like shorten the meeting. Should we try to make that a 45 minute meeting if we can? Is it too late to try to do that? We got like middle school issues, now we got bus issues and Andy's bringing on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. We just chucked you out of the bus. <laughs> 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 I think that rather than having a discussion about the, the middle school with Bartlett, then we should just come prepared to ask Bartlett ask questions. Ask questions. Yeah. 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 And, and they, they don't have to answer. They don't have to answer them on yeah, the spot. Exactly. So here's, our, here's our questions. And actually, rather they didn't. And we could also come to their meeting in November and have another joint one. They wanted to. Yeah. Right. Well, so some of their yeah. questions off the cuff are not always the actual reality. And 5.30, unless you hear from Joe that he's got a big agenda already. If he does, then we should look at more time. Yeah. He's got no agenda. <laughs> so 5.30? 5.30. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Agenda, do you sign? Yes. yes.